come to fabric Monday. Last week we talked about the optimize and the vacuum statements and how they are needed for the maintenance. Now let's check how we could schedule this in a more automatic way without the need to manage vacuum and optimize for every single table one by one. So how can we automate the process of optimizing our tables in a lake house? Let's talk about the challenge to build this kind of maintenance script. The first challenge is to build a script to make the maintenance of all the tables in a lake house, in one single lake house, and schedule this script. Make this script to run in a shadow way. This is the challenge that we will cover on this Fabric Monday. But after this challenge, we have more challenges. We need to make this script work with multiple lake houses in the same workspace. That's interesting. The way the workspace affects the challenge, it's because the execution of the script is affected if the lake house are in the same workspace or if the lake house are in different workspace. And last but not least, multiple lake house in different workspaces. This is the biggest challenge we have. Uh, and I plan to handle this in an article, a bigger article because this is more complex for a short video. I will not handle this last one in a short video. Let's see the first one. Here we have a notebook. I created this code exactly for this kind of automation. So let's analyze the code. We have a function called clean tables. Here is defined the function clean tables and the main code of the notebook. What the function clean tables do is to call the optimize and the vacuum command. For each table this function receives, the function will receive the table information by parameter it needs to be two parameters because the format is different for optimize and for vacuum. And you call them in sequence. First the optimize and then the vacuum. Why the optimize needs to be the first? Because once many packet files are joined in a single packet file, what is the optimize test, unlinked files may be left behind. And the vacuum will solve the problem, we're moving unlinked files. I'm taking the risk to use the retention as zero hours, but as explained last week, this is not a good idea, because for a use of a retention of zero hours, you need to be absolutely sure there is no concurrence, there is no risk that vacuum is trying to remove a file while you have some uncommitted transactions and some processing happen, happening in the lake house. So you need to take a lot of care with that. The minimum accepted for the retention is 168 hours. In order to be able to execute a vacuum with zero hours of retention, I need to enable this configuration. In fact, not enable, I need to disable the check of retention when executing a vacuum. This is needed to execute a zero hour. If you decide to do this in your environment, do at your own risk and take care that there is nothing running in parallel at the same time of this script. On the main code, we set the configuration to allow the low retention. Then we use the OS, import OS, to get a list of the tables. And a for 
on each table calendar clean tables function. The first parameter is built for the format of the vacuum and the second parameter is only the table name is swap to only the optimized needs. The optimized only needs the table name. And that's it. This script will be capable to execute optimize and vacuum for all the tables on this lake house. Let's execute and see the result. The execution is complete. For each table, our script generated a message advising that the vacuum and optimize was executed for that table. So in this way, we have a script to execute vacuum and optimize for all the tables of a lake house. After confirming that our notebook is working and making the required maintenance for our lake house, now we can schedule this notebook. Here on this button, settings. We can use settings to schedule our notebook. Initially the schedule is off, of course. Now we turn the schedule on. What options do we have here? We can choose the time zone. This is important for us to not get confused in relation to the times that will be displayed. So we can choose the time zone in relation to the execution of the notebook. I can choose, choose an start and end. What this means? When this shadow starts and when this shadow ends. For example, I may have a notebook that will execute only during a week. And then will finish. It will not be executed anymore. That's a possibility. But I'm not required to use this feature. And I have the frequency. By minute, by hourly, daily, weekly. For example, according to the frequency, I can choose additional options. For example, if I choose weekly, I can choose on which days of the week. Daily, I can choose only the hour of the day. Hourly, every how many hours? or by the minute. How many minutes? What's the frequency you would like this notebook to be executed? Let's put a frequency of five minutes so we'll see also the history of execution of this notebook. So I put this notebook to execute every five minutes and I will apply. This notebook is scheduled to run every five minutes. If I go back to the workspace, locate our notebook, our notebook is called Schedule Maintenance. I can manage the schedule of the notebook directly from outside the notebook. And I can also see the recent runs. Once the five minutes are completed and the first one is executed, we will be able to see the history of the recent ones. Let's wait a bit and check the history. After this short break, let's check the history of the execution of the notebook. So here we can check the recent ones. And you can see the notebook was executed many times already, every five minutes. Uh, and we can see the difference between manual execution and shadow execution. We can perfectly see the difference between both. So let's get one of the shadow executions. 
We can see the details of all Spark jobs which were executed to complete the tasks of this notebook. But the best place to check the result of the execution is on the logs. Here on driver, we can check the latest STD out. And check the information that we received out. And here we have the information about the successful execution of the optimize and vacuum is the result of the print that the notebook has inside the code. In this way, our eShadow notebook is executing correctly over our local house. We discovered how to schedule a maintenance notebook over our lake house. That's absolutely great. Next week we will see more about how to make this for multiple lake house in the same workspace. When we have multiple lake house on a single workspace. See you next week on next Fab Commander.